If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with all my latest videos. Hi well, guys, welcome to Life with Gaz. In this week's episode, we're going to do something slightly different. Instead of fishing, we're going to go out and do a bit of beach foraging, see what we can find and see what we can make out of it. Now, the reason for this is because the weather is just too bad to fish off the beach. It's blowing in at 70 mile an hour this week. The lowest it's going is down to about 50 mile an hour, which for my days off is no good for fishing. Combine that with the fact that we've got absolutely huge spring tides at the moment and uh, these are gonna obviously just make that sea even more treacherous to fish. Now, to be fair, foraging on the beach in this weather can be dangerous, so make sure you sort of stay safe if you do go out and do this, because it's quite easy to get cut off, especially when the wind's coming in westerly on this coast, because the tide absolutely flies in. So you've got to be aware of your tide times, when your tides are turning, and all the gullies and everything behind you. And don't take any chances, and leave as soon as you think you should instead of carrying on for that extra 10 minutes. But let's have a quick look at what the sea's looking like today and then we'll go down to the beach tonight and see what we can find. So this is a sea about 20 minutes before high tide. You can see how far out the white tops are going, pretty much all the way out to the horizon. You can see them. Now these waves, they've got a wave height of just under 5 metres, so obviously this means that they're going to be bouncing over the walls and this bit which I'm at at the moment is a lot higher than the area which I normally fish and you can see the waves are easily making their way over the top of it. And looking round at the pier, you can also see that the waves are actually um, have a fairly significant impact on that pier with the height of them as well. So as the tide was retreating and as I've made it down to the beach at low water, the wind was still around about 50 mile an hour, so it was hard going, but obviously the wave height is significantly smaller as the tide goes further out because the waves can't chase you up the beach. But the first things I came across were the cockles and you do need to check, some of them are just empty shells, you want the ones which are still alive, and I picked up about sort of about sort of 30 or 40 of them. They're great food, but I also want to give them a go as bait as well. As well as the cockles, also found quite a lot of good sized mussels as well. And as well as being good bait, just like the cockles, I am gonna eat some of these as well once I get home. Now, when the sea's as rough as this, uh, what happens is it stirs up the seabed and it starts actually pulling sort of shellfish off of rocks and out of the sand. And this, to me, is a great way of collecting. And I try and do this about once a year and this will often give me enough bait and a nice meal all in one go. Another shellfish I like to collect, both as bait and as food, are these little clams as well. Now these little clams, when you cook them, end up just like a cockle in appearance and are just as tasty as well. As well as the small clams, I also got a bonus gaper clam as well. And now for the real reason I'm down here is the live razor shells. Now these get washed out of their burrows and the telltale giveaway is the fact that their foot will be poking out the end of the shell so you can often spot these guys when they're in the water. But once you get your eye in and you're walking along you can then pick them up uh, from either the water's edge or just into those waves as you move down the beach. Now with all shellfish, just like with the marine fish that we catch, they've all got size limits. So make sure you go and check out those size limits on British Sea Fishing or any other website with shellfish collection to see all your legal rules and regulations. I find whilst doing this about half a bucket would generally give me enough bait for a whole year so I don't tend to go over the top but once I've finished collecting then I'll have a quick measure of all of them put back any which are too small and then take them home and then sort them into what I want for food and what I want to use for bait. 
Now the shellfish that I'm going to use for food, obviously I'm going to need to purge these guys and why we do that is to get rid of all the sand and debris out of them. It doesn't always work, sometimes you have to wash them out after you cook them, but these guys definitely benefit from it. But when you purge them, just get a bit of fresh water, put a bit of salt in it. If it tastes like the sea, I use that as a guide. Don't make it too strong because you'll kill them all. Don't make it too weak, equally you'll kill them all as well. But this will stop you having magfuls of grit. And of course, if all your salt's not dissolved within a couple of seconds after stirring, then you're definitely too strong. When it comes to the razors and the gapers, I don't leave these guys in as long as I do with the small clams, the cockles and the mussels. And the reason for this is that uh, the gaper, uh, sorry, the razors, they've got an open shell and it's quite easy just to wash that sand through and let them pump it through themselves a little bit as well. Now, also, I find with these guys, if I freeze them straight away, it makes cleaning them and getting them out of their shells a little bit easier. But that's just one of the things that I do. For the cockles mussels and small clams they've been in there for eight hours and you can see just how much these guys have kicked out in terms of sand and sediment and you definitely don't want to cook that when sorting these guys any which won't close themselves and stay open like this they get disregarded as a food and then i use them as bait any which stay closed they're good to cook So right, let's start with dinner and today what I'm going to be doing is making a shellfish paella and I'm going to start off by getting a white onion and as I'm only cooking for myself because no one else in my family eats this sort of stuff, what I'm going to do is just use half an onion this time. I'm going to chop that up into fine slices and then I'm also going to chop up a little bit of chorizo as well to go in there and start adding the depth for that flavour. Generally, what I do when you start with a paella is use a big flat pan. I'm not, I'm just using a saucepan because I'm just cooking for myself and it won't be too deep. So what I'm going to do is put a bit of oil in there, add the onions and then a bit of dried parsley on top as well. And then once that starts to cook and brown off, then what I'll do is I'll add the chorizo as well. Now once the chorizo and the parsley onions are all cooking, what I'll do is start prepping the razor clam and the gaper clam and then what I'll do is I'll bring it all back to the heat and then carry on adding ingredients as I go. Prepping the clams, quite easy, just run a knife down one side of the shell, open the shells up and then take all the white stuff out. Now the other stuff is to do with obviously the stomach, that can have a bit of the grit in it. Uh, any grit you do see, make sure you wash it out but I tend to discard the bits which are connected to the stomachs and stuff and then I'll end up making some baits up with them as well so nothing goes to waste and I also remove the skin off of the siphon of the gaper clam as well once all the prep on these guys are done in terms of removing them from the shells then I'll chop them up into the size chunks that I want for the meal and then just leave them on the chopping board because it's only going to be about 10-15 minutes before these guys are going in the pot. So the next step really is to really get this paella going. So what I'm going to do is add a bit of arborea rice to it. Now arborea is not like bad mouse rice, it's a bit of a rain grain of rice. And I'm going to give that a little bit of a stirring, let it start taking on some of those flavours. And to that as well, I'm also going to add a handful or so of frozen peas as well. So next what I'm going to do is chop these clams up into basically bite sized pieces ready for cooking. And once that's done I'm going to then start adding some liquid to that paella. I'm also going to cook the cockles as well since I've got the white wine out. So I'm going to put a little drizzle of white wine into the paella itself, start that absorbing into the rice and cook the alcohol off. I'm going to put a bit of uh, um, white wine in with the cockles, bring that to the boil and let those cockles pop open when they're cooked. And of course, for steaming the cockles, what I'm going to do is put the lid on to trap the heat in there.
steaming the cockles only takes really around about sort of four or five minutes and any that don't open just disregard they're not good to eat any that do open they're good to go just take them off the heat let them cool down a bit before removing them from the shells Now once the cockles were done, then I added some water, a little bit of saffron, and then also added the other clams as well. And in hindsight, really, I wasn't really concentrating and I put them in too early. They could have gone in a lot later, as they don't take a lot of cooking. Now it's important that you only have a little bit of water at a time if you're unsure on your water amount, because you don't want to oversaturate that rice. But when the rice is nearly cooked and I put that last little bit of water in, that's when I add the mussels and then I'll put a lid on and steam them very similar to the cockles. Once they open up, then I'll take the lid off and I'll continue to take the liquid out of that by just letting it evaporate through steam and then that paella is pretty much done. Last thing to do is just check that all that water is evaporated and that rice is nice and dry. And once it is, then I'll stir, serve it up and I generally like to add this with a nice glass of Pinot Grigio as well. Well there you have it guys, that is a seafood paella straight from Blackpool Beach. Now it's time for that all important taste test and let's see if I can find a nice bit of shellfish to go in there. I think I've got a bit of gaper razor and I think I've got a cockle as well. And that is absolutely fantastic, can't beat fresh. If you've enjoyed this video make sure you like it, make sure you hit the subscribe button just down here, check out my latest fishing video there my playlist up top, my cooking playlist over here, and of course, enjoy your meal.